Painted as usual from photographic reference, I intended this to be reminiscent of the old 20s and 30s railway posters. These were often boldly coloured, great slabs of bright colour sometimes, and designed to be eye-catching rather than true to the exact image of the place depicted. Hence, this one is a line and wash, with a strongly drawn black outline. The colours are accentuated and the shapes simplified. I use a Mygello 24 well folding palette. I find this very useful. I fill the wells using tube watercolour. The lid of the palette seals quite effectively and keeps paint moist for long periods. And if it does go dry, a little wetting and rubbing with a brush soon revives it. But my advice is to do this with an old brush. Don't use a good quality one. The brushes I use are all synthetic hair types. Sable brushes would be lovely, but the larger sizes are very expensive. So I use De La Roney Graduate Series, Windsor & Newton University Series and Pro Arte Proline brushes. All these and others as well find a place in my main art box. The picturesque street itself is a narrow medieval double row of what were originally butchers shops but which are now of more general nature, with numerous gift shops catering for the very many visitors and therefore it can be rather gloomy at times and on such occasions the lit shop windows can provide welcome brightness. I placed the girl pedestrian in the spotlight of the light coming from the opening a little way up on the left which is the entrance to Little Shambles. She is small, making the street seem larger than in reality it is. Although I did get the scales slightly out, it was a lucky error, because it was another one of the tricks used by the railway poster graphic artists to add presence to their pictures. Smaller figures equal relatively more imposing streets and buildings. The use of bold colour can be seen here, where the York stone paving slabs have had their fugitive natural colours exaggerated to excess. But as I said, I wasn't trying to paint reality. Rather, the aim was to create an attractive scene. Reality can be left to the camera. The use of different thicknesses of pen liner has given this painting a rather linear quality and not a lot of subtlety. Perhaps subtlety will be employed to my next effort, whatever that turns out to be. Just for information, the view of the street seen here is opposite to the far more common view looking down the slightly sloping cobblestones towards Stonebow and the entrance to Fosgate. This view looks upward and towards King's Square, which opens out to the right of the street end. I did a painting of the usual view some time back. This picture was painted on a sheet of Waterford 300GM, not, that's cold pressed, watercolour paper. The paints were all Windsor & Newton's artist quality. The brushes I used were as follows, a 1 inch flat wash brush, a 3 quarter inch flat wash brush, a number 8 and a number 6 flat brush, and a number 4 and a number 0 rigger. Painting is actually sized at 42 cm by 31 cm. I stretch the paper onto a 12mm ply panel. The original photograph was squared up and enlarged by hand to create an approximation of the scene. Much was left out and the B pencil drawing might best be described as a general thing with little or no actual detail. Then pens were used to go over and correct any approximations and to add sufficient detail. Once pen work was complete, the pencil work, including the very light enlarging squares, was erased. The outer border was taped with masking tape 
before painting started. I'll leave you to decide whether you think I've succeeded or not, and whether you like the final result or you don't. For me, it was enjoyable, and something a little different and absent of the subtlety that marks much of my straight, uh, that is my non-pen supported, watercolour work. If you've enjoyed this short video, please take a look at some more of my YouTube work, and you might also like to visit my personal website at robert871.wixsite.com forward slash Tony Thompson. There's a link in the description below and also a link to my Vintage Radio website. Thank you for watching.